Yes, good evening everyone. My name is Nguyen Hoi Anh, Head of Admission of Vinh University and welcome you to the webinar of Medical Doctor Program. So joining us today, I would like to introduce Professor Maurizio Chavisan, Dean of College of Health Science, Dr. Lake Ling, Vice Dean, Dr. Jarin, Program Director, Dr. Schiffer, and our Vinyuni student, Alia, Ming Khoi, and Khang Lam. Uh, so our webinar today will have a two parts. So the first part, we will have a presentation from our FANCU team member and student. And in the second part, we will have the Q&A section. So all of your questions will be answered. So firstly, I would like to introduce Dean Maurizio. We'll have a few words to you. Please. Welcome, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be part of this uh, first webinar for the third academic year. Uh, I'm in London, and uh, I, my greetings come from the United Kingdom. It is a great honor for us to be able to try to convince you to join Vinyuni. Uh, Vinyuni is a, a very international environment with faculty members coming from many parts of the world, United States, Australia, United Kingdom, um, and other parts of Europe. And uh, the students, as you, can, as you will see, are international as well. So you will have an opportunity to really interact with the many parts of the world. Uh, we aim to be the best, and we have a, a strong partner in the University of Pennsylvania Medical School, who has helped us with the curriculum, and we have a number of uh, collaborations with other, with other institutions around the world. Uh, so I will uh, stop now and let the other faculty talk, and I'll be around if there are more questions. Maurizio, okay. for the warm welcome. One of my favorite quotes of all the time is that God cannot be anywhere. So he sent doctor. As we are still in the middle of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, more than ever, we need to recruit more workforce for the healthcare system with a various range of options available for students to pursue higher education. Why should they choose Vinuni and the medical doctor program in particular? So to give you an overview of the program, I would like to introduce Dr. Zarin, the uh, MD program director, will introduce to you uh, about our medical doctor program. Please, Dr. Zarin. Thank you very much. And good evening. Namaste, xin chào, good morning. From wherever you are attending this webinar, we welcome you. So my role is just to give you an overview as Ms. Hoi An has said, about the medical doctor program. And what actually makes this program so special? So in next few minutes, let's say six or seven minutes, I will be presenting you an overview. Our program is an undergraduate program. It's a six year program. And the program is divided into three distinct phases. Uh, year one starts with basic sciences and some general education units. Year two is more of preclinical sciences, while from year four to six, you move to clinical internships and you are completely immersed into the clinical scenarios. Again, on a slide, it looks like that there are three very distinct phases but in reality, they are still integrated and linked to each other. Coming to our medical program curriculum. Our curriculum is structured around three themes, very ma major themes. In medicine, doctors are aware of the synonym CPR, and that is what we use to design our program, to make you a very good clinician, professional, and researcher. Being a medical graduate, the first thing people want you is to treat their illnesses, to manage their problems. So of course, you need to have adequate knowledge. You need to have some skills which are required for you to diagnose, to manage the conditions. We also have got early clinical experiences. So you get understand how certain diseases 
are presented to you. Then we have got internship, and we are benchmarking our curriculum against the top standards that are defined in the uh, in the around the globe. Being a medical doctor, society has got certain expectations from you. And these expectations actually start right from the day one when you enter the medical school. At Wynn University, this journey starts with the white coat ceremony. And when you put on this white coat and take the Hippocratic Oath, it means you are here to serve your community and you will meet all the expectations by the society. Being a researcher, our third major theme of the course is about you developing as a researcher. Again, it is not an easy task. It, anybody who thinks that they will become a researcher within their year one, it is not going to happen. So we have designed the curriculum such that in, year, in your year one, you actually start developing the research questions. When you are developing your research questions, you know how to locate the information and how actually that information is presented and communicated, and communicated to general public, to your professional colleagues. In year two, we start with research specific courses and that is your introduction to the scholarly activities which will continue till end of your medical program. And we expect every student will be participating in a research project and hopefully will publish even before they graduate. I told you about the three themes, clinical, professional, and researcher. These themes can be embedded in any program. But the philosophy of Wynn University is that we are graduating not just a medical graduate, we are graduating the leaders. And again, this journey towards leadership starts from the day you join our program. We have got medical program governance structure. Students are a part of every committee, every group that is formed within the MD program. Students have got their own projects. Students are leading different activities like symposium. Then we also have their own personalized plans. So these plans will be based on the community needs. And sometimes these plans are initiated by the students. And I know of one of my students who actually started workshops within the dormitory where students are staying. And it was about inculcating healthy habits and and mentoring them into that journey. We also start engaging students at national forums, at international forums. And again, one of my students will speak today about her representation at international forum. But as we go live, I can also commend one of my students, Eddie, who has just won third prize in a national competition, which he will be presenting soon. Finally, what are the few highlights that you can take away from today's webinar? We will be offering electives, and these electives start right from year one. You have got options to go for electives, though I must clarify that you will not be allowed to pursue clinical electives because not, you are not ready for them. We are also exploring joint PhD and MD programs and hopefully many of our students will graduate with two degrees. Why we are doing this? Because we want to have international accreditations and we are already on way to achieve those international accreditations. As you will know by now, we have got excellent curriculum, we have got exceptional faculty, and these are the vital ingredients to launch a longitudinal mentoring program. So, students feel supported in their professional journey. And finally, none of these can be achieved unless we have got, we have got a learning environment which is conducive for the students' professional growth. And I think at this stage, I should leave it for my other colleagues to speak. Over yeah. to you, Ms. Hoyan. 
Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you, Dr. Zarin, for your sharing. And I think that one of the unique things about Vinyuni is our learning and teaching environment. So now I would like to introduce Professor Schiffer, uh, one of the most favorite uh, professors voted by our Vinyuni students, will uh, provide more information about the teaching and learning environment at uh, Vinyuni. Thank you, Hoi. For me, one of the most exciting things about the learning environment here at Vinyuni University is that all of our facilities are brand new. The university just opened up last year, which means that our lecture rooms are state-of-the-art. Um, our small group learning facilities are high-tech. And we have a whole building just dedicated to science laboratories. Obviously, part of medical education, a big part of medical education is science. And so we have a building dedicated to, to teaching laboratories for biology, for chemistry, for physics, but the one that I'm in charge of and the one I'm most uh, favored to is the anatomy lab. And that's because to me, when we teach anatomy to the medical students, this is the beginning of their medical education. And this lab has been designed to provide 21st century resources for them to learn how the human body is structured, how it functions, both in health and disease. Our anatomy lab has multiple bays, multiple tables, each with its own uh, high density, high fidelity uh, computer screen where they can do virtual dissections of the human body. We also have a Pirgoff table, which I'm going to show you a videotape in just a minute about, which is a life-size three-dimensional touchscreen computer where students can literally do a dissection of both a male and female body in any, any of a number of ways that uh, are relevant to the point of study at the time. And then most recently we've just obtained uh, two human cadavers that have been plastinated. Their tissues for the most part have been converted into plastic and these human beings have been dissected okay, in such a way that we can see most of the, the structures that are important to the medical education that we're teaching here. For example, one of the, one of the bodies that we have is, has been bisected down so that we can look inside the body and can see the internal structures like the heart, the liver, the brain. Um, the other body has been dissected in a way that we can look in, inside the internal ab abdominal cavity and all the muscles have been dissected in a way that we can see them and these these are real individuals and so this really enhances in my opinion the learning experience that we have so the point that I'm trying to make is that at the beginning of the medical education for our students here at Vinyuni um, is really modern and very current and I think it's going to be a very exciting learning environment, especially for the anatomical sciences, which again, as I say, is the beginning of their medical education, in my opinion. So at this point, Huang, if we could show the video about the Pirogoff table, and this is the touchscreen dissection table that we have in our anatomy lab, I think, uh, I think the viewers might find it interesting. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Schaefer. So now it's just a video clip. Yeah, thank you again, Professor Schiffer. 
With the understanding that the medical doctor program is incredibly unique and require intensively practice, I believe that many students and parents want to explore more information about the opportunity to gain a clinical experience and the partnership of Vin University uh, with uh, another hospital. So, uh, Dr. Lekerling, could you please give us uh, more information regarding this opportunity? Thank you, Hoi Yang. And uh, you just heard from our colleagues, um, Professor Schiffer and uh, Professor Zarin, about the um, um, MD program. And as you can see, year four to year six is uh, dedicatedly for the clinical rotations. But we actually expose our students to the patients and patient communications quite early since year one. And talking about the clinical rotations, I think um, some unique um, you know, opportunity uh, that we can offer to our medical students is that they're going to practice not only at the uh, one system of the hospital. We can you know, send them over to different hospital settings. First of all, our Vinmec Time City Hospital, which is a leading um, private healthcare system partner of our Vin Universities and College of Health Science. So Vinmec Time City provides the student with the um, unique opportunity because this is the very first hospitals that get the JCI, Joy um, Commission International accreditations for, you know, uh, lots of high quality international standards. So right from the beginning in uh, student life, our student can learn from a very high quality standardized uh, environment. But um, Vinmec only is, is not enough and some people may wonder, you know, um, what kind of like, um, you know, patients' populations and diseases and also the level of complexity that we make and provide. Um, we realize all the uh, difficulties if student only practices in only one uh, VMAC hospital. So actually we sign up, um, you know, kind of like strategic alliance with a couple of other uh, public hospitals. So uh, namely the Military Central 108 Hospital um, and also the National Children's Hospital and we are now expanding the system to other public hospitals as well. So as you can see, these hospitals are top-notch in the public systems in Vietnam with a huge volume of patients and lots, kind, uh, lots of diseases. So in fact, our students can learn not only in the international um, private hospital system, but also in the public hospital, which is unique because I don't think other medical schools in Vietnam can provide such diversities for our students. And talking about the clinical rotation of the hospital, we also invested a lot in building up the capacities of our clinical educators. So we train our top uh, quality clinicians at Vinmec Time City Hospital, as well as our partnering hospital in the public sectors, 108 and Children's Hospital. So, so far we have more than um, 150 clinical faculties who will be our main uh, instructors and clinical mentors for our students. And before going to the hospital, actually we want to take care of our students so that we can um, guarantee that they have uh, uh, sufficient skills and competencies. And we also have to respect the um, patient safety in the clinical practice. So we invested a lot into some kind of like a virtual or a virtual simulated hospital. Then um, I'm talking about the uh, medical simulation centers. We invested in a, a, a building a more than 4,000 meters square so that our, stu our students can learn a lot about the clinical skill, clinical competencies, and including patient, um, you know, uh, physician communication skill. So maybe I think we should spend a few uh, minutes to uh, watch a quick video clip about the medical simulation centers at Vin University campus. Như tổ chức y tế thế giới đã thống kê là, là hàng năm có tới hàng trăm triệu, 134 triệu các cái sự cố y, y khoa xảy ra ở các nước thu nhập trung bình và thấp. Sứ mệnh của trung tâm mô phỏng là gì? Nói một cách ngắn gọn đó là đặt an toàn của người bệnh và chất lượng dịch vụ y tế lên hàng đầu. Our vision for the simulation center here at Vin University is not only to become a resource center for our residents and our students, but for all healthcare professionals in Hanoi, in Vietnam, and in the region. We have state-of-the-art facilities that we plan to expand 
and to make available to all the healthcare professionals and healthcare organizations the need to upgrade their performance. The advantage of the Vin University Medical Simulation Center is that it creates a variety of clinical environments in which students and healthcare professionals are faced with real world, complex health situations. The simulation center is built purposefully with a huge number of control rooms, mirrors, and more than 170 cameras. What this facility then offers, it allows our trainers to provide meaningful feedback to our trainees through guided reflection, through video-based customized software so they can see their own performance and by the side of trainers, they can also self-reflect on their performance. The important thing is to learn, to be able to learn about themselves, and to learn about their skills, 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 and to learn about their skills. Học được gì đó thì khi họ thực hành tại bệnh viện với người bệnh, họ sẽ giảm thiểu tối đa các cái rủi ro và các sự cố liên quan. Và đó là điều chúng tôi mong muốn. Đó chính là sứ mệnh sau cùng của chúng tôi mô phỏng đặt an toàn người bệnh lên hàng đầu và người bệnh chính là những người được hưởng lợi cuối cùng. Yes, thank you, Dr. Ling, uh, Dr. Ling, for sharing valuable information with us. And I hope that the video clip will provide more information for you about the learning environment at VinUni. So I think that the information shared by our professor and fun QT is especially useful for interested parents and students in the pathway to choose the um, a program, suitable program for you in the higher education. But how about the student? So we have a three representative of students here. So I would like to invite you to raise your voice and sharing experience uh, in uh, studying at Vin Uni. Now, Alia, our first year student from the medical doctor program, uh, can you please share with us about your experience to be the uh, international student at Vin Uni? Certainly, thank you. Um, as the first freshman international school at the medical doctor program, I found as though our professors are extremely caring and my classmates come from very diverse paths of lives. And every single day in the classroom and in the Zoom calls, I learn more and more, not only from my professors, but also from my fellow classmates and students, especially when it comes down to teamwork, and considering past grades and looking at other factors that affect um, medical, um, medical professionals. For example, in Professor Zarin's classroom um, of uh, introduction to, professional, to med professionalism in medicine, we are taught to consider many factors in professionalism, such as ethics. Um, Furthermore, as an international student here on campus, within these campus gates, Vin University is like a portal to another world. Our um, resources on campus, and as a uh, professor has mentioned, is state of the art. Um, we have unlimited sources of knowledge, and we have delicious Vietnamese cuisine in the um, cafeteria and multiple events that are either student-led or provided by the student uh, administration. You truly feel as you are at home here at Vin University. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Alia. It must be very exciting to be uh, an international student at Vin Uni. And uh, uh, so I would like to ask, uh, Lum, 
So you are the second uh, year of student. So um, I have received many questions related to like the research opportunity at Wayne Uni. So can you share about your experience? Have you joined uh, research with professor in Wayne Uni? Uh, well, um, to talk about the my experience of joining the MWIA conference, I think it's just a great opportunity for me to improve the leadership skill. Like I had a chance to work in a team, and uh, we together try to uh, collect and. Uh, process the data, find and read the relevant document, and uh, also um, we we have to make the simple but effective presentation. And actually, um, at my team, uh, we have had been in such an international conference like this before, so we were a little bit nervous and don't know, and we didn't know where we should start. At. But then, uh, Professor Zari, who is an experienced researcher, um, she always tried to encourage us to believe in ourselves and instructed us to make sure that we are going on the right track. So, um, I think, and also our topics is. Um, COVID-19 and medical students. So um, uh, besides acquiring the valuable skills of doing research, uh, we also gain the knowledge uh, relevant to the medical field. And I think it's really helpful for my future career. So uh, I really appreciate uh, this opportunity. And I feel that I become more confident uh, and uh, ready to do more research in the future. Yeah, thank you, Long. And, uh, and again, like congratulations for your achievement. And then uh, I want to ask Koi, Ming Koi. So I heard a story about Ming Koi, and it's very inspiring. So um, before joining Vinuni, uh, Ming Koi already spent like three years uh, studying in a university in US. So I'm really curious, like, what is the reason to come back to Vietnam and join Vin Uni? And what is your experience until now? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Koi, uh, and I am a first-year medical student at Vin University. And uh, thank you, Ms. Hoi-An, for your question. Um, I think my journey uh, to Vin University is quite coincidental in that I saw a YouTube video, actually, uh, of an interview that Dr. Lin Lei um, participated in. And he said that in Vietnam, there's a current lack of highly qualified doctors and nurses, and also clinical leadership in the hospital setting. And when I listened to that, it, it made me really sad. And knowing myself and knowing what I was capable of, uh, I decided to try my luck and apply, and honestly, looking back, I think I made the right decision because, well, first of all, I want to talk about a couple other factors that led me to choose Vin University. Um, besides the state-of-the-art uh, campus and the medical simulation center that Dr. Schiffer had mentioned, um, besides the uh, diverse student body and um, uh, amazing professors that Aliyah have mentioned. I think for me specifically, one of the most important factors is that I really want to work with um, people in rural underserved areas. And I, I learned that the VINMAC hospital system has outreach clinics that would help me fulfill my goal of uh, providing the best medical care to uh, people who uh, currently lack the uh, medical uh, care access that they deserve. Um, and I have mentioned that I am a first year student, but I am also able to take second year courses due to the fact that I was able to transfer some of my credits that I had taken at the university in the U.S. to Vin Uni. Uh, one of my favorite courses, second year uh, courses, is uh, actually taught by Dr. Schiffer here, 
uh, and its anatomy. And the favorite thing about that class is that at the end of each uh, anatomy lab session, we would have these uh, games called group games. Uh, when Dr. Schiffer has a question for each group, and if we, as a group, answer it correctly, we get one point. If we answer it incorrectly, however, we get minus one point. And then there's this big bonus question in the end that's worth five points, which makes the games really competitive. Uh, for example, if the correct answer is the hand, and you forgot to mention whether it is the right hand or the left hand, um, then you don't get any points. And so I just love that when students try to bargain with Dr. Schiffer to give them the points, uh, Dr. Schiffer is usually, um, would, is usually more stern about uh, the, the correct side of the uh, body part uh, that um, he would not give uh, the groups the points. And so I think I look forward to taking more classes here at VinUni and uh, hopefully uh, creating long-lasting memories with my VinUni family. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ho, for your sharing and very inspiring story. And I would like to emphasize that in VinUni, we really want to build the diversity. So until now, we have a 500 students uh, from 11 countries, and they all have uh, many different uh, backgrounds. Some of them graduate from uh, gifted school, some of them are um, in a rural area but have a very strong aspiration. Some of them graduate from overseas, but all of them have the same like unique, um, like we call gen of Vinyuni, is that they have a great aspiration, they have a great commitment, creativity, and very potential for talent. So um, now I think that we will move to the second part of the webinar today is the Q&A sections. So please, if you have any question, leave it in the chat box and I will, we will select it to um, asking. And uh, we also received uh, some question before the webinar when you register in the, in the form. So I would like to um, uh, raise a question from Cao Ming Hai. Uh, what are you looking for from future MD student? So with this question, please, uh, Dr. Schiffer, can you answer this? Sure, I'd be happy to answer that question. Um, I've taught thousands of medical students in my career, and the one characteristic that I feel all of them have is that they're critical thinkers. They critically analyze and try and solve problems because the very nature of medicine is trying to solve the health problems that our patients have. So the, the, the essence of medicine okay, is, solve, is problem solving. And so critical thinkers love to solve problems. And so that's one of the core aspects to, to I think, successful medical students is wanting to be able to solve problems. It helps to have the maturity to handle the stress. Medicine is a very stressful career, but critical thinking is, to me, the essence. Now, notice what I've not said. I've not said that biology students are the best medical students. We are always looking for a variety of, of students with a variety of backgrounds. And in fact, I can say that in my career, some of the best doctors I've known their original interests were in history or philosophy or chemistry, okay? Not necessarily biology. So the message I would try and portray or transfer to the students and parents that are listening is that uh, your background, a diverse background, is actually desirable here, okay? We're looking for a variety of students to be part of our medical family at Venn University. Yeah, thank you, Professor Schiffer. And I saw one question from Chen Thị Phương Thảo uh, on the chat box. After six years, can the student practice medicine? And we also received another question before the webinar from Lê Thủy Tiến. Also have the question like, after six years training, how is the career path when graduation? So I would like to ask Dr. Ling for this question. 
Well, actually, um, the short answer to your uh, Fung Tao question is that no, unfortunately. Um, the simple reason is that um, six year, or if you look at the international program like in UK and U US, you have a, a graduate degree four year after another bachelor degree four years, so totally about eight years. You still have to, um, to be coach and mentors, so then you can be independently practiced. So usually if you want to practice uh, clinical medicines, you have to go through some special training and, and internship again. So in Vietnam, actually the government requires that you have to spend at least a year and a half, 18 months, internship clinical rotations in some hospital. And then you can uh, um, you know, uh, register, apply for the medical practice license. And then you will be coach and continue your uh, career. So that means you can, you can practice. Uh, under the, some supervision. But um, uh, usually the um, graduate um, will try to follow the track of uh, residency um, in Vietnam. Um, the regular program uh, in other uh, universities is about three years. But um, in Vinuni, we have a special residency program for internal medicine and uh, pediatrics for four years. And then surgery lasts for six years. So long story short, you still have to continue with your graduate uh, medical education before you can practice medicine. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Ling, for your answer. We also have another question in the chat box uh, from Hong Nguyen. Do we have uh, to take any special test in order to be admitted at Vinuni? Uh, what factor do you often take into consideration when it comes to recruiting students? So the question I would like to transfer to Dr. Zalin, who is um, the interviewer in many interviews to recruit students. Can you share with us? Thank you very much, Julian. Unfortunately, there is not one test in the world that we can use to select the best students. Nowhere in the world. So there is no special test. Application reviews. And interviews are the main factors in deciding whether this student is able to join our program, which itself is very demanding. And I think Dr. Schiffer has very succinctly defined critical thinking and what are the factors that the team is looking among our applicants. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Zari. Um, I also have the question is that I am a year three medical student at Newcastle University. I'm wondering if my credit could be transferred to Vinuni from Le Phuong Anh. So Ming Khoi, can you answer this question? Um, yes, so uh, I think when you want to apply for transfer credits, there's usually a process. And what that means is that there's a committee who would meet up together and uh, discuss whether um, you would be accepted for the transfer credits. Now, I would say that there are two main criteria for determining whether you would be um, able to transfer your credits. The first one is that you have to complete the prerequisite courses at um, another university. Um, and by prerequisite uh, courses, I mean the preclinical courses that are uh, the foundation for uh, further courses. And the second criteria is uh, the knowledge. Um, we want to make sure that uh, students have the sufficient knowledge uh, in order to uh, understand and be able to take um, harder courses um, such as the, the clinical courses in the future. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you, Khoi. Um, I also received a very interesting question from Ho Si Tin. Will students graduate from Vinyuni qualify for the United States Medical Licensing Examination? I think that it is very like. Um, make interest uh, of many parents and students. So Dr. Zarin, can you answer this? Okay. Thanks again. Uh, again, let me explain. The way USMLE exam works, 
you do not need to graduate to appear for the part one of the exam. So, of course, all of the students will be eligible to appear for the program. And do not limit yourself for just you as MLE. As I said, our program is benchmarked against international standards. So if you want to go and practice in Australia, Canada, UK, UAE, wherever there are licensing requirements, as long as you can follow them, we are preparing you to pass those exams because you are at par at any internationally qualified medical graduate. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Zarin. We also received a, a question on the chat box uh, from Yet Ming. How do we need prepare students for the upcoming stress and pressure when they practice as a real doctor after graduate? And how could you prepare students to deal with crisis or loss after mistreat patient or perceive their death? So, Dr. Ling or yeah, Dr. Zarin. Yeah, I can do that because I'm leading that team. So professionalism is the one where we start preparing students right from their first week at Wynn University. Self-care is a very important part of being a medical doctor. And we start that awareness right from the semester one. Again, death is inevitably a part of life. If you are a medical doctor, you will see death. You will see failures where you cannot save a life. Dr. Lin very nicely put forward the role of simulation center. So it is not that you will suddenly move to a scenario where you are experiencing a patient dying. Simulation is the place where you will be sensitized to these issues so you can deal with them. Second. As I said, our faculty, our faculty is exceptionally prepared. So debriefing is where when you face these situations, you come to the faculty, you come to your mentors. As I said, we have got a longitudinal mentoring program. And these are the people who will facilitate these issues as you travel through the six year program. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Zari. I also received a very interesting question from Vũ Thu Uyên. I want to know more about the culture of MD student, and ex uh, except for a uh, specialized subject, can student learn another subject such as advanced math or uh, general physics or um, so on during their MD years? So I would like to ask Dr. Jarin for the second part of the question, but I also want to hear from our student about the culture of MD student? Uh, well, to talk about the culture of an MD student, uh, at first, before entering the university, I also think that like six years of being a medical student, I just sit in one place and study for the exam. And that is re what I think about uh, MD student. But when I enter the university, I, I change my mind. Because like besides um, studying, we have um, to learn how to balance the time uh, for ourselves. Like uh, last year, I also play sport, um, join the, uh, see my friends, a lot of my friends join the work study program. And also we have a lot of projects to take part in. And so um, I think that the culture, yeah, of course, a lot of that lies for us to do. but. Beside that, we had to learn how to study effectively and spend time um, besides studying, like doing uh, extra activities. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. And Dr. Zarin, can you answer the second part of the question? Of course, you can study. As again, I said that electives is part of the MD program, and you can pursue any electives that you want. We have got College of Business Management, who is offering a variety of courses. We have got College of Engineering and Computer Sciences, who have got a number of courses that you can enroll. So like Khoi said, that there are students who get their credits transferred. So they still have got a lot of time to pursue these interests. 
but physics is already part of the MD program. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Zarin. And I think that this is the advantage of Vinyuni student because we have a three college into a uh, university. So this is not only the opportunity for you to select um, another subject, but also like opportunity to have a uh, interdisciplinary research with other students from different uh, college. And I saw one uh, question from Quang Ming Nguyen in the chat box. What would you say is the most challenging aspect of studying the MD program? So I want to ask our student, Alia and... So as Lam has mentioned, a very big part of MD culture and just being a student at Vin University is being able to balance your medical related courses as well as your non just general education courses such as philosophy and um, academic English and agile innovation. Most of the time the structure of these classes are very innovative. They're very group based work. They're very project oriented and therefore take a lot of our time and majority of the time we're running between meetings and trying to fit in notes and stuff so if you believe that Vin studying in the medical doctor program, studying generally in Vin University would be as you study in high school or generally how you study. It's very far from it. Um, furthermore, even though there are definitely challenging aspects, I feel as though the faculty here, the professors, our um, senior students are very supportive and oftentimes you can pop in for an office hour with the professor if you need further explanation, if you need more resources on campus. So yes, there are challenging aspects. I think it differs between students. One very big one is balancing our subjects and prioritizing, as Professor Zarin said, prioritizing ourselves and self-care is very important. Um, we still have ways to cope and manage these challenges. Thank you, Alia. I also have a one more question, and I think that this is a very common question with many uh, people, is that when will medical students start interning in hospital, and can the student intern in other Vietnamese hospital or just been made exclusively? So, Dr. Ling, can you answer this question? I think I mentioned earlier that um, we expose our students to hospital quite early in year one, year two, but then they will have a kind of like intensive clinical rotations in year four, five, and six. And first of all, the primary teaching hospital is Vinmec Time City um, in Hanoi, but then we also um, quickly expanded. So right now, the student will have opportunity to practice in other hospital and the top-notch uh, public hospital like Military 108 for surgery, for su general surgery I mean, and also some subspecialties in internal medicine and then we also collaborate with the National Children's Hospital so that in pediatrics rotation we will send our students there. In fact our residency has already you know, uh, had the clinical rotations in those hospitals in the last couple of months. So we build up the relationship so that our students can do the clinical rotation in uh, you know, different hospitals, public and private, and then they can learn uh, from different settings in, the, in uh, those hospitals. But I have to admit that for Vinmec Time City Hospital, one of the big advantages um, that we, prof we offer to our students is that they can learn a lot about the international you know, quality standard and also the service mindset, because um, usually the medical program in Vietnam and uh, I assume in some other countries, uh, we, we didn't kind of like, uh, you know, emphasize um, enough on the service mindsets and the empathy and the communication skills. So we try to you know, coach our students a lot in such environment that, uh, you know, um, um, uh, meet the international standard. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Ling. I also received a question from uh, uh, parents. Uh, they concerned that because of the program is uh, teach by in English. So it is it like disadvantage for students to uh, intern or working in state um, uh, hospital, public hospital? Well, Can I think, yes, actually, if you listen to our uh, colleagues and, and the students sharing, um, our main language is actually English. So that, uh, especially in the uh, basic science, in the preclinical science, the, you know, courses for medical students, 
And then for clinical rotation, we also have materials and everything. And one of the advantage I would emphasize is that our curriculum uh, was co-designed and also you know, reviewed and validated by UPenn in the US. So uh, we meet the international standard. But um, we also realize that when the student uh, starts the clinical rotations in our hospital system, the majority of the patients are Vietnamese. And even at VINMEC, as an international hospital, more than 90, 95% of the, of the patients are still uh, Vietnamese. So one of the, I would say, challenge, but also very interesting part of our curriculum is that a student, when they do the clinical rotation, they may talk, uh, you know, they may, you know, exchange and interact with our fellow faculties, clinical, uh, you know, supervisors and, and other like residents in English, but they still uh, communicate with the patient in Vietnamese. So that's the requirement because later on when they want to take the licensing exams in Vietnam and they still have to meet the requirement uh, local authorities, so they have to master uh, Vietnamese. Um, and I think that's also very interesting for our international students if they want to gain the license in Vietnam. However, as I emphasize, uh, we uh, equip the student with both uh, Vietnamese and English, especially the medical literatures, uh, all and the curriculum material, all in English. So that uh, is a big assets for our uh, student and their you know, uh, career path in the future. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Ling, for that answer. Um, I also really impressed with one question uh, we received before the webinar. Um, that is like from Bo Chung Thang. Has the curriculum changed after the COVID-19 pandemic? Mm. Dr. Zari, can you answer mm. this question? The straightforward answer is yes and no. The curriculum that we designed stays as it is. The delivery of that curriculum has changed. And it was because of the safety implications. So we have to move to remote learning. And I have not seen my students for so long. So the delivery of the curriculum was a bit modified. We also have to modify in terms of sequencing the curriculum. So what we could have covered perhaps three months ago, we could not do it. We are planning it to semester two. The second part of whether we changed the curriculum, yes, we did. I joined Wynn University in 2019, and at that time there was no concept of telehealth. Telehealth is a new revolution in medicine, and it is because of COVID. So of course, there is now some addition in the curriculum, and I can assure you that the medical graduates of Wynn University will have competence in delivering adequate healthcare through telehealth when and wherever it is required. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Zari. Um, so the timeline for the webinar is going to the end. So I will save the last minute for the question of Nguyen Vinh An from the chat box. Do computer skill um, a recording of piano performance or a record of a part-time job have my CV? So, uh, Dr. Schiffer and Dr. Z uh, and, and Dr. Ling, can you uh, answer this question for the student? Well, I can tell you that uh, especially during the, this past year, computer skills have become a, an essential part of the educational experience. Um, on both sides, both for the faculty as well as for the students. Um, so the online teaching experience that we've had this fall um, has really accentuated the, the need for computer skills. But I can tell you that far beyond that, uh, medicine has become a computerized uh, science such that computer, computer skills will always be important to, to doctors as they practice medicine. As far as a record of part-time jobs or piano performance, I would love to see that, okay? Um, something that, that shows a new or different dimension of a student or an applicant, to me, I would find very interesting. Yeah, I would like to just add on to what Professor Schiffer said. Um, one of the most um, amazing experience that I had in the last um, 
two years when I did the interviews of the applicants is actually one applicant and um, she mentioned in her CV um, that um, when she's, uh, she's happy, uh, she wrote some lyrics and songs and she's, when she's not very happy, she also tried to, you know, uh, compose some music. And um, when I interview her, of course, um, over the internet uh, through Zoom, I just saw a piano behind her back because she was sitting in her uh, private room. And then I asked questions, so did you really um, compose some music? I said, she said, yes. And then I asked her, can you play for me? Huh. She did it wonderfully with, you know, so talented, uh, you know, applicants. And of course, I, I was so impressed. So just to tell you the story, um, then you know that um, we try to um, select um, the best um, talented uh, applicants. And obviously, you know, uh, music is part of our life and it is so good for healthcare. So we enjoy that a lot. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Schiffer and Dr. Ling. And I think that all of the guest speaker here will already uh, provide to you all many information of the uni and medical doctor program in particular. And um, uh, thank you for your time with us today, tonight. And I would like to uh, welcome you to another event of the uni next time. And if you want to join another webinar for admission, uh, we will have another webinar on next Wednesday and it will be conducted in Vietnamese, so you can invite your parents to join also to answer all of the questions uh, related to admission. And once again, thank you for joining us today and have a good night. Thank you.